Hi, congratulations on having your hot tub and one-stop spas installed. I'm going to run through a series of videos for you so you can take good care of your hot tub um, after you've had it installed. Okay, for the first of our videos, we're going to look at actual testing of the hot tub. There's a couple of different ways we can test the hot tub. We can use what most people do, a standard test strip, or we can use a photometer reader. Hi, so we're first of all going to look at the standard test strip. Uh, the ones that we recommend are the Lamont InstaTest 4. Some test strips on the market can be extremely inaccurate. These are probably the best on the market. If you go for a cheap test strip, you're probably going to end up getting the chemistry all wrong. So invest into a good test strip, InstaTest 4 is available from us. InstaTest 4 uh, comes with a simple litmus paper in there and on the back we have a, a little chart. And what we're going to do is we're going to dip the strip into the water. With these you don't have to wait, just dip it in, then we're going to shake it off horizontally and then we are then going to measure it up to the chart. So you'll notice I've got the test strip in the upright position and the bottle like that and then each pad will line up to the corresponding um, section on the test strip. So to test the hot tub with test strips, it's extremely simple. With the test fours, all we're going to do is with the jet off, find a nice calm part of the spa, dip it in, about four or five inches down, pull it out, shake it off, hold it horizontally, and if I bring this to the camera, what we'll notice is that we've got our levels that correspond. Top one being chlorine or bromine, the next one being alkalinity, next one being pH and the last one being total hardness. Total hardness is not much we can do about that apart from pre-filtering the water before it goes in. pH you can see on this one is slightly low so we're going to have to look to alter the pH to get it into the okay range. Alkalinity is shown as fine and our sanitizer in this case bromine is in the middle there around about three or six if it's uh, three for chlorine six for uh, bromine so our sanitizer is fine but we need to do something with our ph okay so for the next video we're going to look at balancing the water on the last video you saw that our ph was slightly low our sanitizer was okay if the ph is low then the water is acidic and it's going to do a lot of damage to our hot tub and burn off our chlorine or bromine very quickly. So we need to do something about that. If the pH has gone very high, then what that's going to do is make the water extremely scale forming and it will reduce the efficacy, the efficiency of the sanitizer that's in the water. So with a low pH, we simply are going to add some pH increaser. If the pH was too high, then we would add some pH and alkalinity reducer. To add the pH, when we tested we had the water still, whenever we add chemicals we always add the chemicals to plenty of water and we do it with the jets running. So I'm just going to activate the jets. Okay, so with the jets running we are able then to add our pH increaser or reducer, in this case we're going to add an increaser. The important thing to note is that when we add a reducer, we have to add a lot more reducer to have an effect than we do the increaser. The increaser, we need very, very small amounts of that to have a big change in the water. Whenever we're adding a chemical, we'll make sure that the wind is behind us so it's not going to go into our face. And we're going to add it nice and evenly into the water. So I've just put a little bit on that side and if you swing around to the other side, just going to activate the jets on this side. Again, not too much with the increaser. Add that to the water. And then we're going to let the jets run for about 20 minutes. Whenever we've got any type of chemicals or we've dosed the spa, we always leave the cover off for at least 20 to 30 minutes allow that chemical reaction to occur because we will generate some gases and if we shut that cover straight away we're just going to trap that gas in there we're going to start deteriorating our pillows, speakers and the underside of the cover so we leave that cover off whilst we mix the chemicals together. Okay our next video is about controlling the sanitizer levels in our hot tub and also adding that sanitizer to the water. 
sanitizers, only for chlorines or bromines. The purpose of the sanitizer is just to make sure we kill any bacteria or we control the growth of any bacteria that might lurk in our water. Remember our water stays in hot tubs for up to three months, uh, so things can grow in there if we don't maintain sanitizer levels. The golden rule with our sanitizers, our chlorines and our bromines, is to make sure that the levels never get to zero. As long as we've got something in the spa, it should be actively controlling bacteria. For chlorine, we're looking for a level between 3 and 5, and for bromine, we're looking at levels between 3 to 5, or if it's holiday left, between 4 and 6. So, it doesn't matter if it's chlorine or a bromine, the principles are the same. We will always use a chlorine granule to initially dose the hot tub to get the levels to where we want them to be. And then what we would do is we would add some tablets into a floating dispenser that would float around the hot tub when we're not using it and slow release. So the granules themselves are rapid uh, release, so they are going to get in there and they're going to have give us instant levels in the water, whereas our tablets are a slow release, they're designed just to tiny, put small tiny amounts of bromine or chlorine into the water to maintain those levels, and that's important. So simply, same principles as with our pHs, if we are going to test, we're going to test it with the water nice and still, and if we decide that we need to put some more sanitizer in, the best way to, uh, to correct that is just to use some brominating granules and you can simply put a few of those into the cap, switch the jets on and then dose it nice and gently into the spa. Okay, again make sure that we've got the wind behind us so this doesn't blow in our eyes and you'll notice that I'm wearing a glove. We do recommend wearing gloves when adding any chemicals to the hot tubs. So we would simply have the jets on and then very evenly spread those chemicals into the water. This one's quite well sanitized so we're not going to put too much of that in. It's best to put little and often into the water. So with our bromine tablets, we simply take the pucks from inside, remember to wear the gloves, and what we're going to do with those is get our floating dispenser, put the tablets into there, and we're going to fill it up. These dispensers will typically take around about six tablets. Put the cap on. We can adjust it by unscrewing this to lengthen that piece, and then that will increase the size of the window. So if we need to increase our levels, if they're not being kept there, we would open it up or if we're overdosing it, we're going to close it down. Simply introduce that to the water, and that is sanitizers. Right, so the next video, we're going to talk about shocking the hot tub. Shock dosing is something we do to help clear any organics that are in the water, but also to supplement the sanitizers, the chlorines and the bromines in the water. Particularly if we're using bromine, any used bromine, we can actually, react, actually reactivate using a non-chlorine shock. So a non-chlorine shock can be used with both chlorine and bromine, and if we are using bromine, it's good probably once every fortnight, just to add a little bit of a non-chlorine shock to the water. Same principles apply, we'll have the jets running, and then we would add the right amount, the instructions on the back, to the water, nice and even in the air round, to shock the water. We'll do that once a fortnight, or it's good just to put a little bit in post bathing. And that's non-chlorine shock. The other thing that we can do, if we've had a bit of a party, um, we've had a few people around, and maybe a bit of makeup's got in there, and the water's starting to look a little bit unclear, um, then what we can do is we can take an Oxybrite sachet. Now this is a chlorine shock mixed with a clarifier, and then again, we can spread this into the spa, and that will help clean up the water, it will shock dose the water, and help clean up that water ready for the next bathers. Okay, so if we're in a hard water area in particular, like we are here in Lincolnshire, and we've dipped our, uh, our test strip in, and it says that we've got high water hardness, uh, there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, when we are filling the hot tub, we can actually remove some of that calcium and magnesium out of the water by introducing something called a inline pre-filter. That pre-filter, a couple of caps on there that we take off, 
we had an adapter, screwing adapter onto that, put that onto our hose pipe and actually fill the hot tub using the pure stream. And that will just take some of that hardness out of the water for us uh, for the next maybe up to three months that we're going to use it. Remember when we're filling the hot tub, what we do is, we, of course, the hot tub will be off. We'll take the filter lid off, take the filters out and actually put the hose pipe over the filter housing, not into the water, just balance it on top trap the cover over the hose pipe to hold it in place and let the water cascade into the filter housing and fill up the hot tub through the filter housing. That will stop any air locks. If we're using the pure stream, same again, we'll click the hose pipe onto it, put it underneath the cover, allow that to cascade in and fill the hot tub through the filters. So that's how we prevent high buildups of scale, uh, in particular calcium and magnesium when we first fill the hot tub. Also, that's not going to get rid of all the calcium and magnesium, so it's important that we use anti-scale. So you'll get one of these with your hot tub, and with your anti-scale we're going to put a directed amount on there when we first fill the hot tub, and then once a week we're going to put a set amount into the water, just simply pour it into the water with the jets on, mix that in, and that will stop any scale building up on our expensive and important equipment like our heaters and our pumps. So one thing we can add to our water, particularly in hard water areas, to keep that water as soft as possible and to help us manage those hard water levels, is something called O-Care. O-Care is a water conditioner. With water conditioners, you don't need to use them in the water. We obviously must maintain our correct pH and our sanitizer levels that we talked about in other videos. But what the O-Care system will do, in, and most water conditioners, is it will soften that water, it'll give it a lovely soft feel to water, it helps keep the balance of the water, which is mainly our pH, and it will also make sure that we keep the sanitizer in the water. It actually helps some of the sanitizer be more effective in the water and actually helps kill bacteria in itself. It gets rid of that breeding ground for bacteria by keeping all of the pipe work and the equipment lovely and clear, stops any grease build up in the pipes and in, inside the our, uh, pumps and heaters. Uh, and also, like I say, helps out the sanitizer. So we tend to use almost as little as one tenth of the sanitizer that we would do normally, saving us money on our expensive chlorine and bromine. So that's okay. How to apply it is quite simple. And all we do is once a week, we're gonna first of all work out the capacity of our spa. So if our spa was 1500 liters, we would add 150 ml of okay into the spa per week per bottle. So, we have a bottle one and a bottle two. Always, always add bottle one first. Bottle one is the first system to put in there and then we activate it using bottle two. So for this particular tub, this is 1700 litres. So I would put 175 ml of bottle one into the water. You'll notice that when I add that to the water, the water goes milky. That's perfectly normal. That's it just activating with the spa water. Next, giving it a shake, I'll take bottle two. And then I'll add the same dose, 175 ml in this case, for 1750 litre spa into the water. And this time you'll notice it goes even milkier. And that's because the activator is working with our prime number one bottle. Then all we're going to do is switch the jets on, again leave the cover off for a, uh, probably around about 20 to 30 minutes, let that activate and after around about 30 minutes to an hour the water will go crystal clear and that's the okay dose. We put that in once a week, same time every week, so generally I pick a Sunday. Bottle one first, followed by bottle two, and that will keep our water nice and silky smooth, keep our pipes, equipment nice and clean, and reduce the amount of sanitizer we need to put in the water whilst keeping the correct balance in the water. Okay, so for the next video, we're going to talk about our filters, the importance of them, and how to clean them. So our filters are probably one of the most important things for keeping that water nice and clean and stopping any buildup of bacteria in our hot tubs. 80% of good sanitization of water should be done via filtration and circulation. So a good well-designed hot tub is going to take care of most of that and of course we'll supplement it with uh, putting the right levels of sanitizer in the water and keeping the balance there. But all that is wasted if we don't keep our filters clean. In short, 
the cleaner the filter, the cleaner the hot tub. So with our filters then, we recommend changing these at least once a year, maybe every six months, to get the best out of our hot tub and spend the least amount on our chemicals. As well as changing these, we can't just simply leave them in there, we need to be able to clean them. This tub has uh, two filters which sit under there, some tubs only have one filter. So if you're not quite sure about your filters or which to order, just give us a call and we can help you out. So when we remove the filters, the important thing is we must switch the hot tub off. If we don't switch the hot tub off, something might fall into the water, get sucked down into the filter housing and get stuck in the pump. So we always switch the spa off before we remove the filter. Once we've removed the filter, obviously this one's still in packaging, yours won't be. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and probably an instant filter cleaner is what I recommend. You can just get a hose pipe and rinse it down with a hose pipe. If you're using just the hose pipe, make sure we get inside all of these pleats and clean every single one of those. Once we finish cleaning it, then we're gonna let it dry before we put it back in. Letting it dry allows these pleats to shrink back down, the pores inside to open up, and we have a more effective filter when we put it in. A top tip might be to buy a spare set of filters, so whilst these ones are cleaning, we can put a fresh set in and start the spa back up again. For cleaning, if we want to make it easier, we can use the local instant filter cleaner. With this, we don't need much of this. We're simply gonna probably do one, two, three squirts of spray in there, fine spray. Let that soak in for around about 10 minutes. And then like we did uh, before, just with the hose pipe, we're gonna rinse down. If you can do it with hot water, even better, but there's no need to use cold. Let that dry before we replace it back into the spa. That's what we would do, I and mean, you want to do that every one to two weeks, depending on usage of your hot tub. The other thing that we can do, and we should do, is every six months or so, take a bucket of hot water, do our regular clean on the filter, then add a filter uh, cartridge cleaner into that bucket of water, mix it in, and then what we're going to do is place this filter in that bucket of this solution overnight. It's called an overnight soak, and what that's going to do is deep clean our filter, we're going to take it out and allow it to dry, and that's filter cleaning. Okay, so one of our final videos then is going to be about our supplementary products. So we've talked about our, our essentials, maintaining the correct balance in the water via good pH. We've talked about sanitising the water, make sure we've got enough chlorine or bromine in there to kill any bacteria or certainly control it. We've talked about filter cleaning, uh, and uh, they're the essentials. Some of the other things you want to do is actually take good care of your hot tub. You spent a lot of money on your hot tub, we want you to enjoy it for many years to come. And we want you to look at your hot tub in 10, 15 years time and it look just as good as the day that we delivered it. And there's a few ways to do that. We need to make sure we clean the acrylic. The acrylic's important. If we don't clean that water line, we recommend cleaning that water line at least once a week. Now you can simply do that with a microfiber cloth and go around there but if we do get particularly in hard water areas lots of calcium building up then it's best to use the spa polish we apply that spa polish onto the rag not directly onto the acrylic and then we'll go around the surfaces and lift that dirt up using that so that's our uh, spa acrylic polish now if we've got a vinyl cover then we can use this on the vinyl cover if we've got a hard top cover or any type of cover to be uh, to be sure we, what we can do is we can apply this to any of those surfaces, including the exterior of the ca uh, cabinet itself, if you've got a dual roof cabinet. So it simply cleans everything, including the dash of your car, which is pretty cool. The other thing we've got is no more foam. So if you've had a few people around, uh, we recommend for your own bathing to have a, a set of uh, swimming costumes just for your hot tub. And once you finish with those just rinse them down don't put them in the washing machine if you put them in the washing machine you're going to need a lot of this because it's going to generate a lot of foam via the detergent coming out of the swimming costumes into your spa so always have a set of swimming costumes that you can keep just for the spa and just rinse them under a hot tap after you've used them but obviously we have some friends over every once in, uh, once in a while and of course they wouldn't have done that they'll just bring their normal swimming costume that's been through the washing machine so we can get a build up of foam in the water we can also get foams from putting too much chemicals in or a poor quality chemical so with the no more foam uh, all we simply do is switch the jets on and once we've generated any foam that might be in there then we simply just give it a little spray into the water 
and just attack that foam. Use this very sparingly because if you put too much of this in, it will alter our pH level. So use that just a little bit and you'll see that foam disappear. And our supplementary product is our Ultra Spa Clarifier and that's just something we can put in as a preventative or as a reactive so if, again we've had a bit of party and the water is looking a little bit cloudy and murky we can pop a little bit of clarifier into the water just to help uh, help out the filters get rid of anything that's in the spa into the filters ready for the next bathing um, or we can use this as a preventative maybe once every two weeks we're going to put a dose of this in just to make sure that we can break up any organics or any creases that are in the water now as we went around cleaning um, the acrylic with our microfiber cloth, nothing wrong with that. One thing if you've got some stubborn scale that's around the spa, then we do recommend the Ultra Mip or the Dura Mip. And this has just got a very light scouring, sorry, scouring uh, surface on there that won't scratch the acrylic, but it'll just get those stubborn uh, bits of line scale and grit off of the spa. And uh, that comes in a lovely marigold glove so it keeps your hand dry at the same time. So if we're using that, again, we can use our spa polish onto the mitt, outside of the hot tub, and then work around the waterline with our 